So Spirit was extremely adamant that I check out this video. It's Paranormal Nightmare, Season 16, Episode 9, A Ghost Destroying Our Family, Scary Haunting. And, you know, at first I'm like, okay, well, why? But let me just say, doing this reading, they pushed me to my limits. So immediately upon watching this video, I got this immediate sensation of wanting to cry. And that's because that's what the people were feeling. Like that's what the father and the son were feeling. They were feeling so overwhelmed about the situation. It was very evident that what they were going through was not fake. And typically for me, like when someone's talking about a paranormal experience, because I'm clairsentient, I can feel the emotion behind it as they talk about it. So that helps me decide whether or not they're full of shit. But with these guys, they were traumatized. And I feel so bad about it. Like, okay, I'm getting shivers right now. But let's continue. So they do state that when they call for help for the Foreman brothers, they notice that activity picked up significantly and got worse. This is a common theme among severe hauntings. Why? That is because the entity in question doesn't want the target to get help because they know that if they get help, that means that entity is on the way out and they're gonna get kicked out and they don't want that. So they're gonna do everything in their power that they can to deter their victims from getting help which i've actually encountered this when helping other clients while it initially started as a haunting i feel as though the entity has attached itself to some of the family members especially the father and the little boy i just have that gut feeling like and a lot of times too when you have hauntings especially like let's say you do the ouija board and you know it starts with the haunting in the space however depending on how severe it is how relentless the entity is it can become an attachment and so when you go through the cleansing method not only do you have to cleanse the space but you have to work on cleansing the person as well i can't sleep i don't feel safe in my own home it's gotten to the point to where like i'm angry all the time so the fact that he's angry all the time now, that's the entity's influence. That's it working and poking and prodding to see how far it can take this person to see if they can possess them. And if you get to that part of influence, it can be very dangerous because you can go in between possession states. So. The thing with influence is it can absolutely make a person feel a certain way. It pretty much manipulates their emotions. It makes me angry. If if I try to ignore it, it's like as if somebody grabs my intestines and just twists them. Like I get real bad stomach pain. In the last couple weeks, I've started getting a lot of pressure in my head, where it feels like a real bad mic, like a real bad headache. As soon as I walk outside, it's gone. I feel like I'm watched all the time. And it can get someone to do something that they otherwise wouldn't do. And it's kind of like that line between possession and not being possessed. And it's very dangerous even to get to that line. I've gotten to the point where I've had to take some of my firearms out of my home because I'm afraid. It depresses me a lot. And even when he said that he had to remove all the firearms in his house, I am so glad that he did that. He knew that you know, with all these nightmares and these dreams, it's trying to get him to do something terrible. And that's one thing that you see in, um, is it The Conjuring House? 
and or the Amityville Horror House, it's, it's dangerous. And so this is where I'm starting to realize that this entity is more severe than it's kind of letting on. And I'm like, okay, well, if it's at that point of influence and it's sending him these nightmares, these dreams, these visions of doing heinous acts and it's manipulating his emotions, that tells me that we are now coming across to the lines of extremely malevolent earthbound spirit or we're getting to that degree of could it be a demon is it not a demon or is it possible to be an extremely malevolent thought form or familiar it's very severe on the frequency scale so they're saying two owners back there's allegations that they participated in witchcraft, which makes sense because something, this is where I decide that whatever has been conjured or is a product of whatever went on in that house is not human. And typically when you have things to this degree that are not human, they were absolutely brought here one way or another from some kind of ritual or what have you, but they were brought here because things this malevolent don't just come out of nowhere. They are brought to the location. And it makes sense that it starts off with a little boy. Why? Because the little boy is the easiest target in the space. The little boy doesn't have boundaries. The little boy is probably, he doesn't have his ego 100% developed yet. So that means he's gonna be more apt at seeing these entities than some of the adults or older children. And it's easier to terrorize a child, obviously, because, you know, they're gonna get scared easier. It's fucked up to say, but it's true. That's how they work on their victims. And I would say it makes sense that then it would move to the dad because the dad has a lot of past traumas, which I'm not gonna get into. It ain't anybody's business, but his own. He's got a lot of past traumas and he saw it, which tells me that, and this doesn't apply in every case, but in this instant, cause I saw it, cause I was able to go back and see like, how did he see it? This entity's energy is so freaking dense. It's so heavy and so thick. He was able to see it. And that's why a lot of other people were able to see it as well. Not just the family members, but it's kind of like, it kind of brought him back to a period in his own life that triggered some things, but also it's working on his traumas, like I said before. And when he tried talking to this thing, did you get any responses? Um, the first time we'd done it, it was telling me that it was family. Yeah, survey says that's a lie. No, it's not family. It's a lie. I will say, though, um, the father does have some family members popping in to give him some, like, reassurance and some healing energy, but they're not the ones giving and providing the paranormal activity. No, 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 no. And a lot of times, you know, negative entities will lie on who they are because they want you to feel like you're not as in danger, which then kind of gives them more of a um, chance to do bad things, obviously. But also, too, it sometimes people will be like, oh, well, if it's grandma, then, you know, there's no reason I need to kick it out. It wants that. It wants them not to kick it out. It was asking me if it was alive, and then I shut it off. Well, about a week or two later, I turned it on again, and all I got was man with tattoos, and I'm covered in tattoos. And it's extremely important not to communicate with it. So if you're experiencing a negative, I would say all hauntings are negative. You're not gonna have a positive haunting. Why? because benevolent entities don't haunt people. It's kind of self-explanatory, but 
oh yeah, you don't want to communicate with it because it again will create a bridge between you and the entity. It's an invitation and it's giving that entity permission to stay when you don't want it to stay. Now it's important that, you know, investigators do communicate with it because it's trying to figure out what it is, what it's capable of, so they can figure out on how to kick it out, at least in the Foreman Brothers case. And also, they want to make sure it's actually haunted before they, you know, go around and do their cleansing because it's not great to do it if there's no issue. And yeah, the fact that they're getting nightmares, nightmares in general are pretty common when you have a haunting but in this case, with the father, so it's purposely giving him nightmares about unaliving himself and his family members because it's testing the waters to see what he is capable of doing. And the father is just like, hell no, like, I don't want this. And the fact that it's doing stuff like that, again... You know, you can have negative earthbound spirits and they can give you nightmares, same with thought forms, but the degree of the nightmares are important to take notice of because the more gory, the more effed up it is, typically then you lean towards the kind of malevolency you're dealing with. And so this is where I'm like, okay, well, he's trying to, you know, get him to unalive himself. He's trying to get him to murder his family. I'm starting to wonder if it's a, and I don't like saying it because people overdo it with this, but I have to question, is it a demon? And the fact that it just keeps trying to influence the child in the father, it is so relentless, so relentless. Sure, you can have negative earthbound spirits that'll try to influence someone to do something like drugs, alcohol, crimes, but typically I would say it's not as common to try to get the person to murder their entire family. But I will say this, that little boy is really smart. He is really smart. And he's able to discern what's his thoughts from the entities and a lot of people have a lot of problems trying to do that and the fact that he can do it so young is amazing and I'm glad that he can do that because that can be extremely dangerous if you can't discern the difference between your own thoughts and something else's and let me tell you in the beginning of my spiritual journey let me tell you during the haunting I had it tried so hard to get me to do things, like heinous things. And I was like, fuck you. I know it's not me talking. Get the fuck out of my brain. And then I would just call like, you know, Archangel Michael to kick it out and then it would work. But sometimes, you know, when you have stuff trying to tell you to do really bad things, just call on your archangels, Jesus, whomever you feel comfortable with and tell them that this isn't okay. I don't want this. Get rid of it. And they will. So, the hot to cold, when it comes to a space and people, usually when you're in an area and then all of a sudden, you know, it's a normal temperature and then it gets cold, that's the entity sucking the energy out of the space and the people. And usually when that happens to you, the person will start feeling not so good because, you know, their energy is being taken from them and that leaves them susceptible to, you know, illness, and the entity can make them feel ill, ill, <laughs> can make them feel ill as well. They are very worried about the mirrors. I'd be worried about the mirrors too, because if they suspect that that entity is going from mirror to mirror to mirror and mirror, makes it difficult to cleanse the space. Um, yeah, I could see that. I can absolutely see that. That's also another common thing too because they can use the mirrors as a pathway to travel. And then 
the last couple days besides this mirror i i hate it i don't know why i try to cover it if i can try to not look at it if i don't have to always feel like something's over here this closet is the one that we any of us dread going into uh, and that's where we have our clothes hamper but a lot of times when you go in it i mean it's cold there there's a big like temperature change from in there than there is out here to the point to where when you go in there you got goosebumps it's cold and then this is the spot where i was sleeping and my wife was up against me and it was 4 4 30 in the morning and i felt this real bad pain i'm getting a headache sitting here talking so i reached over and turned the light on and uh she was telling me that there were scratches that went from somewhere on my shoulder to the middle of my back and it felt like as if somebody took a whip and hit me it was all welded it, it shakes that's what happens around this time i start getting nauseous so i had to take a break i had to separate myself from the energy because you know when i watch these videos i lower my frequency to meet the frequency of the entity so i can see it and let me just tell you i have some sketches for y'all but i also did an ai drawing to better showcase this thing that i was seeing so i was able to get this far with these sketches and then and then because it's malevolent and evil it zapped me of my energy and i was out for five hours which is crazy, but let's see if you can see these images. So upon, you know, doing my channeling and meditation, I've discovered that there are two different entities. One is a thought form and that's, you know, the circular dude with the face. These two are the same. But those are a result from the negative energy output, not just from the ritual itself, but from the entity, because the entity is also putting out negative energy, and the people that are suffering from the entity are putting out negative energy, and it's consolidated to create that entity. Now, it's going to look really freaky deaky, because a lot of the energy that it had absorbed to create its form is from the demonic entity now the second entity i was drawing its face but there's more to it this is the demon and yeah my little sketches are not great because you know doing it with the blindfold on my face but also you know um i was trying to do it quick yeah, it's, it's, it's not looking good. At first I thought, okay, well maybe it's not a demon and it's like a tulpa created from the ritual. Like, tulpas are kind of common with Native American rituals because they'll work together to create something to protect their land. Like, there's a specific objective for that thought form and the duty that they want it to do for them, right? So I thought, okay, maybe this is what that would be. Mm -mm. My guides were like, nope, you're close, but nope. So this thing is not a thought form, that demon. Mm -mm. And then I was like, well, why is it acting the way it's acting? Because it's very elusive. It is shape shifty. But the one other thing too is in the video they stated that they smelled a nasty odor of rotten eggs or rotten flesh and that typically is something common when you have a demonic haunting now spirit did tell me while that is the case you can have these odors and extremely malevolent hauntings because it has to do with the frequency in which the entity is from. So you can have an extremely malevolent entity that's not demonic that can produce that smell. But in this case, it's it's a demon. It's, I would say it's more of a minion type demon or 
It's not a devil, for sure. It's not. It's more of just like a um, minion, demon, a lower ranking demon. But nonetheless, their hauntings are still very severe. So, you know, the closet absolutely has a portal, no doubt in mind. And when I was channeling and, you know, meditating, I saw the rip in the energy field. And it that's what the portal looks like in that closet, in that case. A lot of times you'll just get, like, the common, like, you know, door-looking one. But no, this one's more of a rip. And I suspect that the reason why it's in that closet and a lot of the um, paranormal activity and the heaviness is going on in that bedroom is because that ritual was done in the bedroom and or around it. And again, that's probably why there's a lot of um, paranormal activity and heaviness and yucky feelings towards the back of that house. There's also a portal in the hallway which, if you notice, there's also a mirror in the hallway. But I wasn't certain if the portal was in the... I don't think the main portal in the hallway is the mirror. I think they're two separate. I think the mirror is what the entity uses to just ride and escape when it wants to. But it doesn't spend most of the time in the mirror. It's just a convenience thing when it's trying to, you know, be unnoticed. Are you setting the alarm off finally? If you're back there behind Josh, set one of the alarms off. Did you do something to Larry when he was in bed? It is crazy though how big of a difference it does feel from being out here to back there. Around this time, I started to feel like I wanted to cry again, and I could tell that had to do with the family. But also, I feel like, you know, the Foreman brothers, I wouldn't be surprised if Sean was feeling that too, because he is Claire sentient. I, I did see a black figure standing in the living room with them. And if you're looking at Rocky in this moment, he's holding the camera, it's to the left of him, which is out of frame or screen. So, I mean, plus, I don't think you'd see it anyway, just because, you know, psychic medium here. But those who are sensitive probably would see it. I'm also noticing that this entity picks one or two places in the house that it likes. And they stay there. And then it uses its energy to manipulate the energy in the house to create the sounds and the movements of objects. It's making a pop sound and that has to do with like how it's manipulating the energy. And the same thing with the bangs. It doesn't have to be physically present in the space where that object is moving. It, this thing is so powerful, it just wills it. It has the ability of, is it um, telekinesis, um, psychokinetic energy, it can just move shit when it wants to, to freak the people out. And it knows that when it makes those sounds, it freaks them out, so that's why it keeps doing it. I will say it does like the bedroom, but again, that, I think that's because that's where the main, the portal it came out of is. And it likes the bedroom of the youngest son because... Of course, it's gonna torment the son. It likes to torment the son and the father. You see us. You see us. Where are you at? I want to know what your name is. What is your name? My name is Josh. What is your name? We're gonna do a full cleansing of this house. We're going to bring holy water in here. We're going to use scripture. And we're going to make you leave. I'm telling you, if you have a message, now is the time to do it. Teenager. Are you affecting the kids inside this house? Innocent. The kids are innocent. You're not. The man scares me. The man scares me. 
Are there multiple spirits inside this house? Or does Larry... Oh, my GoPro went dead. Okay, I've got to switch out some batteries real quick. This camera with me in case something happens. That's another thing, you go through batteries here like crazy. Ew. Yeah, it says teenager, innocent, ill, he scares me, or whatever. It's trying to feign innocence. It's trying to pretend that it's something it's not. Again, to lower your senses of severity. Like, it's trying to make it like, oh, it's not that bad. I guess we don't have to kick it out yet. But no. And, you know, as they're doing the cleansings in the house... I am so glad that they worked on the portals as well. You can't do a cleansing in a space and not do the portals. The paranormal shit will just come back if you miss those. So I'm glad that the Foreman brothers got their shit together. Now, other thing I wanted to point out to the little boy. When I was channeling for him, I noticed there's like a... It looks like a snake-like entity that's wrapped around him. To me, that's like he's got an attachment from that demonic entity. And even though, so they did show them cleansing the space and, you know, praying over the family, which is great. It's great. It helps tremendously. And I did see, you know, as they were cleansing the space, the energy, like the golden light, very sparkly going through the house, going like this, like a Cinderella animation. So I did see that, and I did see the um, entity get removed from the location. However, however, that family, those family members need to be cleansed energetically as well, because that demonic entity, while it may not be in that space currently, it can still haunt from a distance and it's latched on to the boy like it's got part of its energy wrapped around the boy so i would not be surprised if that you know in the future that the stuff doesn't happen again or the or that there is a mental or physical decline in that little boy and the father and maybe even some of the other members. Because remember, the entity has attached to the family members, some of them. And even if you cleanse the space all the way, you still got to cleanse the people. And I do see that, like I said, it's wrapped around the boy's... I couldn't tell if it was an arm or a leg. All I know is all I saw was like from here to here and just the snake wrapped around. But I do know it was of the child and the father. So they need to get some energy work done because this is going to be an issue for the rest of their life. And like I said, just because, you know, you remove the entity from the space... And even if they're not directly in your auric field, there's still some of that energy remaining from that entity. It keeps a cord. It's a line. Um, so that entity, if they see it opening, so let's say the father does something, I don't know, like one night he drinks a bunch of alcohol and he gets drunk. Well, that line, that entity can use that and see his way in, can see himself back in to that person's auric field and become, you know, more reattached. But it's just like, the other way to explain it is, yeah, you can cleanse yourself in your space too, but all it does is the entity gets further and further and further away to eventually, you know, they're way far away. But there's always going to be that, like, chance that, you know, again, if the person suffers some kind of trauma, 
gets into drugs or does anything, that's just like immediate reattachment because again, it's like the crack in the armor, it finds a way in. So they have to be extremely cautious. And oh, before I finished channeling, I kept seeing a woman and I'm like, this makes no sense because during the video, I didn't see a woman, but on the spirit box, I'm pretty sure they did catch a female voice. And I didn't even remember that until I, you know, kind of went back and I was like, okay, why is this going on? And then I kept seeing a woman and she was giving like this Marilyn Monroe like style, pinup girl style. And she was brunette with wavy, you know, hair like Marilyn Monroe. But she was laying on her belly wearing like very um, inappropriate clothing. And her, she was laying on her belly with her, you know, butt facing me. And I was like, what the frig is that? Why? And then that's when it dawned on me. This is a demon. It's pretending. It can shapeshift. It can pretend to be whatever it wants. It's the demon. And, you know, when I do these readings, too, I have my special deck that I'm working on getting printed for everybody. But I pulled some cards just because I like to double check to make sure I'm right. And the first card that pops up was deception. And what's on my deception card? It's a split image of a girl and a freaking demonic face on the other side. So to me, that was very like, um, it's like a reassurance that I was right. Before ending this video, I did want to give a few tips on what you can do if you find yourself in a similar situation because your typical palo santo and sage ain't really gonna work on a demon. And I spent quite a few years dealing with my haunting and trying to figure out what worked best to remove it. Now, you know, the tips that I'm gonna give you, they may work for some and may not work for all. And when you have these types of hauntings, it's really, a trial and error kind of situation and you just gotta like play with things that I just saw something on this side and I was like what is that dog hair it's dog hair some things that I noticed right off the bat your first step your first initial step is you have to be adamant that you do not want that entity there and then you have to ask benevolent beings to remove it for you due to the law of free will, right? Okay, once you get that step taken care of, then comes the harder part, and that has to do with working on yourself. And I've said this on multiple occasions, but they like your traumas. They like anything they can drudge up and rub salt into to get that negative energy to feed off of and whatnot. So you can do this by, you know, working on yourself through therapy, through, you know, like internal dialogue, I guess, meditation, just coming to terms with traumas and working on healing them. Okay, now in addition, so the Foreman brothers used holy water. I don't know why I kept saying holy oil. I think it's because I use holy oil, but you can use holy water or holy oil. If you have any portals, you must seal those. You have to, or the cleansing ain't gonna do much and the paranormal activity is gonna come back. So if you don't know where the portals are, your best chance is to ask a medium and if you can't, just when you start doing the um, visualization and manifestation work, you gotta like build that, like closing the portals and asking for your guides and benevolent beings to close it for you. 
but when I do it in my space, I know where they are. And when I start doing my um, whatever incense or herbs I burn, I make sure, and that this is a me thing, this doesn't have to be a you thing, but for me, I outline and I go, you know, Archangel Michael, help me close this doorway. I do not want this here. It's going, get it gone. Like something like that. It doesn't have to be those exact words. It doesn't have to be, you know, I don't know, poetic. You just get to be adamant in your intention that you want it gone. And then when you go around your space, you want to do the same thing with whatever you choose to burn. Now, when it comes to demonic entities, it takes a combination of three things. Your will. You don't necessarily need like the stuff to burn, but for people it helps bring in the intention to make it stronger. That's why I like to do it as well. But yeah, you can do your um, burning. You can use copal, frankincense, um, myrrh, and then you know, your guides or your angels, whomever is assisting you, basically. All of this has to work simultaneously, and you are going to visualize, you know, the entity being taken out, and as you go from room to room, door to door, window to window, closet to closet, you're going to outline each and every entryway and seal it. And you can even imagine, like, the golden white light sealing it and turning it into, you know, a brick wall or whatever. Whatever you want to visualize, it's up to you. But essentially, as long as you visualize it and you intend for it to be and you have your guides working with you, it will help. Now, you have to be consistent and it can't just be a one and done thing. You got to keep doing it for a bit. And I noticed that, you know, I would cleanse my space during my haunting and it would help for like a day or two and then problem would come back. And you just got to keep doing what makes you feel comfortable. And obviously when you're burning shit, please make sure you're not breathing it all in and you're ventilating your space. Have a window open. Well, and a door, whatever. So the stuff can go out and you're not breathing in toxic smoke or just smoke in general, okay? Be smart and make sure, you know, fire safety, obviously. But you can do these things. Some people like to use candles. I use a combination of quite a few things. I will do my, you know, cleansing of the space. I will do my candle work and also visualize like fire, like cleansing the space and like, and that's after, you know, I do the going around the house. But when I go around the house, I will visualize a tornado sucking any bad stuff out. And even Metapsychics um, Liv had validated that. I wish I had the video, but when I recorded it, the sound didn't take, of course. But so, yeah. So once you do your going around the house and you do your visualizations of it being taken, then you could do candle work if you want to. Again, I do it. And then I use the fire to manifest, you know, a flame purifying the space. And, you know, I just do it. I was doing it weekly and then I got to a point where I could do it bi-weekly. And then I got to a point where I could do it monthly. And now we're probably on about two months where I haven't needed to do it. But depending on your like abilities, what you can do, sometimes you don't even need to use the physical stuff. And you don't need the candles and you don't need the herbs and stuff. I like it because it smells good and it helps make the intention stronger. But that is up to you. You can also hire somebody. You can get a priest. I personally think it can get expensive if you do it. Some people do it for free. Some people don't. Um, you can also use the holy oil and holy water to seal up 
things like they did in the video. So Josh went around and put the holy water and anointed the mirror, the bed, everywhere that had problems. And you can do that in addition or separately or however you want to do it. But again, it takes the intent, the manifestation, the visualization, the assistance from your guides and benevolent, you know, helpers. But I just wanted to throw that out there that you can do it. And you can also do it in addition to a lot of times, you know, when Chas and I have issues, we'll do stuff together and we'll help each other out because two is better than one. You can ask for assistance for people to send you prayers and to send you, you know, good vibes and along those lines. Same thing applies here. You can ask for help from multiple people simultaneously and, you know, the group effort will also help cleanse the space. So yeah, I just wanted to add that in here because I think it's very important. And sometimes when people get into these situations, they panic, they shut down. You don't want to do that because that is a recipe for disaster. Anyway. Okay. Anyhow, that's all she wrote. <laughs> that's all I got there. So just a quick overview. Two entities, one is a thought form, one is demonic, but it's a very low in rank demon, more of a minion demon. Currently, it is removed from the space and out of the vicinity of the people, but it still has residual energy left on some of the family members and they have to watch out for that. So, Foreman Brothers, if you are watching, uh, I highly recommend you get them to do some Reiki or energetic healing to pull all that negative energy off of them, and that'll make it, it'll pretty much sever the cord from that entity. So, guys, hopefully you like this video, and... Sorry my uploads were a little late this week. I'm getting slammed with work. But, again, thank you so much for watching. I will see y'all soon. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.